Table. I, I was thinking about um, beginning points. Um, as Gary was, was talking, I, I, like within the last two years, my husband and I were um, up on uh, the Mendocino coast and going for a walk, and I had been thinking about spirit of trees and uh, reading some early uh, folklore. And uh, I said to my husband, do you suppose these trees still have spirits? And he said, no, they've been driven out by us. And at that point, the wind blew, and all the trees went <laughs> So they're still there. Um, OK. <laughs> Uh, I think my, my, I would point to the, a number of points of departure for me. Uh, and first one that, that comes to mind is typing. Uh, and uh, using my father's typewriter, which was, gave me a sense of power. It wasn't what I typed, it was having a machine under my control, making a click clack sound, and being, uh, it, in, in this posi position of working with materiality of language, like actually putting them onto the paper and putting letters on the paper and then having power. Um, I think the next, so this is like maybe third grade, fourth grade. Uh, then the next moment that I remember uh, clearly is coming from the West Coast. We, I grew up in Berkeley and coming to the to the East Coast, my father had a year-long gig in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We came to New York, and my father and mother took me and my brother and sister to uh, MoMA, and there was an exhibition of New York school painting. And I remember looking at particularly the de Kooning paintings and the Motherwell paintings, and having absolutely no idea what they were and knowing they were it and just like, this is it. And, but as I say, not knowing what it was. Um, then the next, I think, moment of initiation is reading existentialism and coming to, I also come from an atheist family uh, and c appreciating the uh, what would now maybe be reductive and vulgar uh, sense of existentialism with its view that life is absurd and the thing to do is live it. And to live it with commitment, a sense of purpose, it's all there is, it behooves us to take it seriously even though we know it's absurd and that we'll die at the end um, and basically dematerialize. Uh, and then, then I think the next sort of initiation point for me as a, a young woman in college at, in the beginning of uh, the, the, when the civil rights movement began to move into uh, the, the more middle class and white uh, culture that was dominant. This is, I'm talking about like 1959. 1960. My, my mother had known Langston Hughes when she was a little girl, and he was a friend of my, my mother's aunt, Dorothy Ward Erskine, who was famous on the West Coast as a, a very early ecology activist who saved a lot of green, green, green land in San Francisco and in Marin County. And she was a, a friend of Langston Hughes and a, 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 probably a member of the Communist Party although subsequently the family all denied that rigorously for obvious reasons um, in the 50s. Uh, and so I had this, uh, got involved in uh, anti-war uh, demonstrations, civil rights demonstrations, and the um, emerging uh, way, new waves of feminism. And from the days of the typewriter, I had been writing all along and always thought that, that writing was a, a way of, of, of engaging with all the things I was thinking about as a sort of continual um, process of thinking, uh, thinking philosophically, existentially, and theoretically. And then I have, I've ended up 
sp uh, spending a lot of my time reading he Hegel, Kant, Spinoza, a lot of theory. I love this stuff. I think it's just fascinating and, and beautiful. Um, and, and then also, uh, like the other, my, my friends here, uh, the, the same figures have been important to me. Um, but I think maybe particularly Gertrude Stein, uh, and partially because I was asked, the, the critic Marjorie Perloff wrote an article in which she said that, that Lynn Hegelian was the heir to Gertrude Stein. And my, my father had written a fan letter to Gertrude Stein in 1936. So there was a connection there. Uh, uh, but I, I felt maybe if I was the heir to Gertrude Stein, I should get to know her work. And, <laughs> and then I was invited to give some lectures on Gertrude Stein, and I became this little uh, Steinian, uh, which, which has stood me in good, in good stead, because there's endless Stein and endless occasions on which one can speak about Gertrude Stein. Uh, so that, that's sort of been a, another uh, sort of experimental, intellectual, theoretical, feminist, protestational, uh, confrontational, activist uh, exploration. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just leave it at that. <laughs>